chapter. This tiny little chapter talk about special purpose outlet, food uh, waste disposal and dishwasher. I'm going to remind you guys, um, dishwasher and garbage disposal are appliances. Appliances, the rule for appliances in, in chapter 4, um, article 422, it tells you if it's 13, 13 amps or less, 20 amp circuit dedicated for it. If it's more than 13 amps, we take the full load current and we multiply it by 1.35. You guys remember that one? We did it for the water heater. The same rule applies. Most of these two equipments, the food disposal and the dishwasher, almost always in residential guys, the amps are less than 13. So what do we do? We throw a 20 amp circuit and we feed one for the disposal and one for the garbage disposal, one for the dishwasher. So I'm not going to tell you something that you don't know. You already did that one, Chris. Okay, so 1.35 or 1.25? What's the multiplier? Uh, well, let's go there. One point. Let's go to 220. Dot, um, 220. 220. I'll go there. Yeah, 220. Article. I'm sorry. 422. 422. 422. Um, 422. Imagine. Let me write it down here. Four. 22.11.11 and when you go to the 11 you're going to go to E because and when you go to E you uh, you're going to go to um, E the one that we apply is E2 and 3 E2 and 3 E2 and 3 single non-motor operated appliances um, I guess you can argue that some of these are uh, are motors also, they have a motor on them. I mean, the pump and, and all this good stuff. But that's the rule of thumb that I use. 13, 13 amps, 20 amps. So the, the rule of thumb, guys, if you have an appliance like these fixed in place appliances, give it a dedicated circuit. Fixed in place appliance, give it a dedicated circuit. Uh, so it says, uh, it says actually 150, not 135, not to exceed 150 of 13.3 amps, over 13.3 amps. But I'm going to retract this one. If you look at the description, guys, this is for the ones that don't have motors like water heater. We apply it mainly for water heater, right? Because if you look at the dishwasher, does the dishwasher has a motor in it? Yes. Does the garbage disposal have a motor in it? Yes. So for all practical reason appliances, we apply we apply a 20 amp circuit for these small appliances. You're saying a 20 amp circuit for each? For each. One for each. How did you guys design your uh, yours? Uh, yeah, I think we put them on a multi-wire. Yeah, like two, two 20 amp circuits. Yeah. yeah, but the other thing, the other thing is that the, the other reason why we put them in two 20 amp circuits is the inrush. If if the garbage disposal and the, it got your garbage disposal, if you put them in the same circuit, if the garbage disposal as well as the uh, the dishwasher start at the same time. You could trip on air rush the circuit breaker, not just load on air rush. I want to see a, a, through a couple of a couple of, of of numbers here for you guys. So a few things we're going to talk about: the dishwasher, garbage disposal, direct connect, um, and a couple of branch circuits and so forth. Um, I'm going to go directly to a nice nice picture. Here you go, right here. So the garbage disposal that we have in this book, the disposal. We have, it has a 7.2 amps typical, and we're supplying it with 120, with, with the 20 amp circuit, 20 amp circuit. Now I'm not, you, if you guys have two small appliances, you might be able to put them in one, in one circuit. It's a good design to give a disposal 120 amp circuit and the dish, dishwasher 120 amp circuit, 120 amp circuit. Um, Rob, my friend, if you want to do it by code, here's what you're going to do by code. Garbage disposal, actually, yes, it's an appliances, but also to motorize appliances. You're going to apply the rule of motor. What's the rule of motor for appliances? You take the 7.2 and you multiply it by 2.5 <clears throat> to get you the overcome protection device for this, right? 2.5 to get you, that's motor. So 2.5 times 7.2 equal, get you 18. That will get you 18 amps, right? And then what do you go? Go up to 20 amps. And so where's the code for the uh, for the what? 2.5. 2.5. If you treat this one as a motor, 
That will be 430.52. Table 430.52. 430.52. Okay, so if you then, <clears throat> then what we did for this guys, if you treat it as a motor, you grab a 20 amp circuit, and you give your garbage disposal, garbage disposal, and you give number 12 conductor, 14, um, 12, uh, 12, uh, 12, two, 12. For, for controlling the garbage disposal guys, you have the option, you have a switch that could act as your disconnect as well as your controller. We're going to have this one in a second. There you go. So um, this is your garbage disposal. Ashley, my friend, you're going to grab a 20 amp circuit from here. This cable is going to be 12, 2. And I want somebody to tell me what is the role of this? Why do we have a snap switch? On and off is one. Appli all appliances guys need what? A disconnect. Every appliance needs a disconnect. So every disconnect to disconnect it. How are you going to disconnect this equipment? This will act as your disconnect because it's small appliances, as well as your controller. Okay. So when you have appliances, please you're going to pay attention to a couple of things: overturn protection device. Number two, disconnect. Number three, branch circuit. So number one, guys, here. Here's number one, overcome protection device. Number two, um, disconnect is here's number two. Brand circuit is number three. Done. Like motors, right? One, two, three, overcome protection device. Any question about this? The best application for all these appliances, guys, the best way to do it, honestly, is to plug it in. To have this one plug in, there's rules how far this will be, cannot be more than three or four feet. So you plug him in. Why you plug him in? You unplug him if you're working on them. You unplug him and they're completely disconnected. Though the code allows you to use the disconnect here as the snap switch as a disconnect. Any question is about the appliances. You need an overcome fiction device. You need a conductor and a disconnect. That's it. So if you had a switch reset to go back, you don't, plug in would be a disconnect and the switch would be a disconnect. To control it. Yeah. And I don't know, anybody have seen guys where the cab? Anybody have seen a garbage disposal where the cab actually activates it? You don't need a controller. Anybody have seen it where you push the cab, you push the stop, and you push that cab here, and it will actually activate and start the garbage disposal. If you read the industrial application. Yeah, so that's, you don't have to have a switch. That handle over here could activate you. So Nick, if you have a one that can be controlled by the cab by pushing the cab down here, to activate it, then do I need the switch here? I don't need the switch as long as I have a plug in as my disconnect. Any question guys about, about the garbage disposal? I, I guess you can add a fourth thing, which is controller. Where is my controller here? This is my fourth. The switch is my controller. Also could be the cab is also could be my controller. Any question about the garbage disposal? You have a garbage disposal. Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, it tells you in, in uh, the appliance section to go to part three of the motor section. Mm -hmm. If it's, the appliance doesn't if it's motorized, yeah. Okay, and where does part three start? Where does part three start in the motor? Net? Okay, it's in the first page here for 30, part two, part three. Part three start at the motor controller. I part two conductor part three takes you all the way to part four. Where's part three? Anybody can see the page here? Is, yeah. There you go. Part three start at motor and brand circuits. Page uh, three hundred and nineteen, article four thirty thirty one. Four thirty thirty one. Okay. Motor and brand circuit overload protection. Continuous duty, um, all the way to the overcome protection device and the brand circuit and the whole deal. Any question guys about this? One more thing, uh, Phil. All these need an overload. So number five is overload because it's a motor. And the overload, sometimes you put them somewhere here, a little button, somewhere on it. So that will be number five, my overload. 
So if you put a lot of bones around Thanksgiving is coming, right? And you start throwing bones in your garbage disposal and it stops working, make sure you go check. And that little red button have popped out. <clears throat> so you might have to go push it down after you clean the garbage disposal. Any question guys about the garbage disposal? Garbage disposal for all practical reasons, it's an appliance, but it, it's an appliance that has a motor on it, so you're gonna apply the rules of a motor. Residential, you don't have to worry about anything if it's a residential. All what you have to do guys, 20 amp circuit, most of them, 20 amp circuit, number 12, done. It's an industrial, if it's an industrial, then you have to apply the rules of a motor. What's the rules of a motor? Conductor 1.25 times full load current, and disconnect, you have to have a disconnect, 1.15 disconnect. You're going to have over capacity device 2.5 and overload 1.15 or 1.25. The whole rules of a motor. In residential, you don't have to worry too much about this. Any question about garbage disposal? Garbage disposal. Okay, now dishwasher. Dishwasher, guys, is also an appliance that has a motor in it, right? Um, so you have to have a, 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 some type of a motor in it, dish, your dishwasher. Um, so for this one, here's what they're having. They're having, look at first here, here's your full load amp given by the appliances, and they're throwing at 20 amps on it. So at 20 amps, here's my 20 amp. Uh, my dishwasher is right in here. Here's my plug, and here's my cord, and you plug your cord in here. And I want to remind you guys what the appliance is. So here's my 20 amp, number 12. Here's my overcurrent protection device, no problem. Here's a branch circuit, no problem. How about disconnect? Where's my disconnect? Disconnect means it's a switch. How about overload and all this junk that comes with it? That's part of the machine. If it's an appliance like a dishwasher, guys, all what we care about is providing an overcurrent protection device. And you can, if you wonder why did they come up with a 20 here, if you take the simple rule of multiplying this by 1.25, what would that give you? 9.2 times 1.25 equal. So it gives you 11, 11.5, 11.5. So you really, you could, you could go with the 15 amp circuit breakers. Most of the many these are guess by manufacturer, they give you the recommended, most of these equipment, manufacturer give you a recommended over condition device for it, typically 20 amp circuit. My question for you, Tom, my friend, if you grab the garbage disposal and the dishwasher and you put them on a 20 amp circuit, would it work? It would. It would work. But you are exceeding, your, you are getting into the point where it could malfunction on, uh, on overload um, or on, um, on inrush. What's the good design? 20 amp circuit for each one of them. You need it. Do I need a disconnect for the garbage disposal and the dishwasher? Yes. Do I need a brand circuit? Yes. The brand circuit number 12, the, the overcompetition device number 20. And for the dishwasher, most of the time we're going to be looking at um, a plug as you disconnect. All appliances must have a disconnect, either a plug or a snap switch or a circuit breaker next to the equipment or a main. A, a big disconnect on the wall, depend on the size, yes. Yes, you, as, as in removing the equipment and plugging it. Re accessible, not, but not readily accessible. accessible. So if you're plugging it and pushing it behind, what you're saying, is this accessible? Yeah, you can, you can move, it, drag it, but not readily accessible. It's accessible. You don't have to bust wall to it, but it's not readily accessible. Any question guys about this? As long as you can unplug it for maintenance. Like um, range. Range is an appliance. Does it need a disconnect? Yes. Where do they put the disconnect for range? Right behind it. So what do you need to do to maintain the disconnect? You're going to move range out, unplug it, and maintain it. It's exactly the same symbol. Any questions, guys? Any comments? Any questions? Okay, the dishwasher has some heating element that takes your temperature. Now, this is just FYI from 120 hot water all the way to 140. Um, this is FYI only. Not a big dishwasher. 
uh, okay, direct wire, wired or, or hardwired or plugged in. Overload, all of them guys have overload. Over, all of them have to be grounded, as we all know. Uh, anybody have seen a, a portable dishwasher? Portable dishwasher, it's like anything portable. You plug it any anywhere on a 20 amp set and a 120. 120, 20 amp, or 15 amp, and up it goes. So everything is, if it's portable, guys, there's not a whole lot to it. You know, all what you have to do is you can plug it anywhere. Uh, I want to bring a couple of things. Okay, where is it? Um, I want to remind you guys of a couple of things here, for, especially for the portable ones. Temperature, let's go to the portable ones. The ones that's not fixed, portable this dishwasher. If you have a portable dishwasher, it's an appliances, and you need to plug it in. <clears throat> and the plug in is right here and fed from a circuit. Here's one, a couple of rules for this one. Suppose this circuit 20 amp, and this conductor is number 12. Okay? And this is, this is my dish washer. If it's a portable dishwasher, that you move it from one location to another, here's the rule. The rule is, if this receptacle, there are two rules. Rule number one, if this receptacle is shared, if this, if this receptacle is shared with other, there's other receptacle in the same circuit, then this size cannot be more than 50%. 50% of 20 is what? 10 m. If this, this is if it's shared with other receptacle. Suppose that there's another receptacle here, right? And this circuit is feeding other receptacle. If you have a dedicated circuit for it, you have a dedicated circuit to a plug, link, bring here, and, and, and tie it. Anybody knows what the size would be if it's dedicated circuit? The same thing, 20 amp, number 12. What's the size here? Dedicated circuit, not shared, portable. That will be 80%. 80% of what? 20? What's 80% of 20? 16 amps? Mm -hmm. This can't be 16 amps. That's it. That's it. Then which rule are you going to be? There is no rule because you don't know where and, it is. And, no, then, then this which rule would apply because you don't know where to apply it. Which one is the... The stringent rule for the design. This yeah, one, fifty well, percent. Yeah. We only can do what we can do. <laughs> the same thing for GFCI in a, in a GFCI have to be readily accessible now. You put them in a, in, in a basement, somebody put their freezer against it. What are you gonna do? As I told you guys when we were talking about this one, if I'm an inspector to avoid that one, I will make the put the receptacle higher than you know, at a higher level, maybe four feet or five feet. So if you push the equipment behind you, hopefully if it's a freezer, you're not going to be covering it, hopefully. But this is not inconvenient, it becomes too. Any question? That's it. That's all the garbage disposal deal. This only applies to portable dishwasher. This applies, this rule applies to portable, any portable equipment that you plug in. Any portable equipment that you plug in. You can't plug a portable equipment um, but how do you control this? The question is, I see, I see your point. How do you control this? You're not supposed to plug a portable equipment in a convenient receptacle, any convenient receptacle, shared with other lights or receptacles, if it's more than 50% of the rating of the circuit. How do you control this is a different story. <laughs> any questions? So really to recoup here, if you have a garbage disposal in a dwelling units, 20 amp circuit, dedicated circuit, done. Garbage disposal, dishwasher. What you guys did, what you, Chris, what you guys did is you have multi-wire bank circuit and you fit both of them. Okay, that's all I have about this particular one. Um, I think I have a couple of pictures, if I remember right. No, not this. One of the largest power consuming affordable appliances, the vacuum cleaner, the ones I've seen are generally rated at 12 amps. 12 amps. So that's pretty much anybody that uses it is, is in violation of the. Well, what's the 50 amp? What did, what did we say? 50 amp that will give you a 10 amp with a 20 amp circuit. 
that would give you a 50, 12 amps. Yeah, 12 yeah. 15 amps. Well, if you take 80% of that, most household wealth are 80%, so we better get every housewife in town and, and throw in there. Yeah. So if you take 12, if you take, uh, what do you say, 0.8, and they are not 0.8, they have to be 0.5 because they're shared with others. So 0.5 times 15, 7.5. 7.5, yeah. You have no control, yeah. With if it's portable, you have no control. But if it's fixed in bliss, I can. Eighty percent of the appliances. Okay, here's the. Yeah, good. How is what? How do you turn this one and off? Right, this grounded. Grounded. Ah, uh, grounding guys. All appliances must be grounded with an equipment grounding conductor. So all of them, right in here, your equipment grounding conductor. Um, this garbage disposal, I will just remind you, this act as your disc connect. This is your uh, brand circuit. Overcam fixture device is going to be located somewhere here, 20 amp, right? Um, connected hopefully to the hot. Uh, what else? Squib the ground conductor. Where's the controller for this? Thank you. This is this acts like, like your controller. The tab will act like your controller. Otherwise, what do you need to do? You need to have a snap switch. Done. The snap switch? No, I mean. Yeah, this one? Yep, absolutely. Tied to the equipment. We don't install that. If it comes with this piece comes with it, with UL listing. But if you hardwire it, yep, it's gonna be tied to from this side, obviously, it's going to be through the equipment ground conductor. Uh, what did we say here? Um, flexible cord. There's 18 inches on the flexible cord. I think it's UL listing, if I remember right. Um, flexible cord must be identified for the purpose. Shall have a grounding tie plug and must be not less than 18 inches long. Okay, so there's a there's a limitation. We don't get into the sizing this guys because that comes with the that's for many mostly for manufacturers. Mostly for manufacturers. This is where it tells you where the grounding is here. But the length of the cord, that's a UL listing. Here's that one that we looked at, hardwired. Anybody ever seen that one? Where, what is this? You have the water going through. As the water goes, you have a flow switch and you turn it on and off. It's a flow switch. So every time the water goes, this baby is on. So this is your controller. You still need an overcome fiction device. One year. You still need number 12. Conductor, you still need the uh, controller is there. You still need a disconnect. What's your disconnect there? You have to have some type of a disconnect here with inside. So suppose suppose to suppose that circuit breaker is your disconnect or otherwise. You have to have somewhere here, uh, flow switch, act like a disconnect, a dis some type of a disconnect for it. So the flow switch is really the controller. Every time the water goes through, it goes on. Anybody ever install them? Yeah, for the most part. Commercial dishwasher yeah. that takes all the food, runs it through, and you don't have to worry about that. Anybody sticking their hand in it, then it's yeah. So as as long as the water is on, this will go on. But you still need a disconnect. Um, yeah, go ahead. Actually, this one has the inner. Number 10? Yeah. Why would you use number 10, though? For the drop? Yeah. If you need, if the amp is high you, and you need number 10, yes, you can use it. You can use any number. Typically, I wish we we're not talking about commercial. Typically, residential, number 12, good to go. This one, guys, I, I uh, forgot to mention. This one actually has two controlling systems. 
the controller, that what they're doing is the cap here, twisting uh, the drain lid, lid here will activate it. So we have controller, here's the controller. Anybody can tell me why do they have the full switch then? On the left drawing application, when it empties the dishwasher, there's very likely to be food in it. And okay. the drains, they want to chew the food up before it, so they won't clog up the pipe system and the rest. So that will guarantee you that you would not use, if you do it this way, it's guaranteed that the garbage disposal will never run if the water is not there. So, because usually when you when you have garbage disposal, you want, you're supposed to put the water in as it moves this stuff in. So this one, it's a controller, but when the water is, is running, it shuts this. And now this does not have to start. It can start only if you push the lid. So only if you push the lid. Kind of interested in seeing how that water works. Must be must have something to do with pressure, right? And the pressure. It says twist. Back. I've never anybody used them a twist. You're supposed to twist the handle and it just goes down. I guess you twist it up and it goes up. I. Right. I'm talking about the, the this one. Yeah. Oh, the flow switch is a flow switch is a whole different animal. The tiny little thing. You know, when the water goes, it pushes the contact. Yeah, we have them in we have them in the lab. If you want to look at them, yeah. There's a mechanical deal. The water goes in, it pushes the contacts up, it closes the circuit. So, so if you want to draw the circuit, the control circuit for this guys is your motor, and this is your garbage disposal. Over temperature device. This one is your flow switch. This is your um, lid. This is my lid. This is my flow switch. If you guys, these are normally open. Can you guys see? We've done with Gary some control. These both of them are normally open. If if the water is running, and I did not twist the lid, would it run? There is two, two switches in series. So in order for this motor to do, first you have to have water, and at the same time you have to twist that lid. Anyway, it's a way of controlling, making sure that there's water. What's in it for you if you wire this? What's in it for you if you wire it? You have to bring the circuit into the flow switch and out of the switch, flow switch. And that that thing here is somewhere in internally wired where you bring the hot in and out and by twisting you close that circuit. Okay, that's all what I have about this garbage disposal business. Any question guys? Any question about the garbage disposal? Before we move into um Bathroom fan. Any question about garbage disposal? 20 amp circuit, number 12, dedicated receptacle, non GFCI. You need to have a controller, some type of a controller. You need to have an overload provided by the manufacturer. A disconnect, either the switch, snap switch, or the plug. Done. Okay. Chapter uh, 22. Chapter 22, my friends. Talk a few things about the heating and cooling and, and a few things. We're going to touch on that one. We have a special purpose outlet for bathroom ceiling. I don't know how many of you guys have seen this one. <clears throat> this is a combo, a fan. We have a combo of um, a heat, a vent, a light um, in the bathroom combo, and also a fan in the attic, and also the hydro, hydro uh, massage tub. Three locations we're going to talk about. A couple of things I'm going to go directly, guys, into my favorite um, fixed in place electric heaters and 125, all the way. There you go. Here's the combo that they're, they're dealing with, that they're talking about, guys. I've seen them personally in hotels and motels, small hotels. Anybody, Chris, you've seen them? I don't know. You have them in your house? Okay, great. 
So what you're supposed to have, you have, uh, you're supposed to have three switches, <clears throat> four switches. One will get you a, uh, one switch will get you night light, will get you light. Here's your night light, here's your light. Get you heat, if you put the heat and the fan, that will heat and throw the heat at you. If you put the fan only, that will exhaust the fan out of the building. Who cares? A combo like this, 99% of the time if you have it, you're looking at 20 amp circuit in residential, and you're gonna put number 12. Dedicated circuit, other than, actually, other than, other than the circuit that's feeding the, the, the bathroom. You're not gonna feed this one from the circuit that feeds the bathroom, if you had this combo. You have your heat. If you have just an exhaust fan, no problem. Exhaust fan, no problem. That has an exhaust fan, a heat, and a bunch of lights. 20 amp circuit is the best scenario for, for feeding it. Any question about this? That's basically what the, the the deal is, as I said, how does it throw heat at you? There's a damper. You know, if you're doing heat, the damper will close and uh, the fan will shoot the heat down at you, through the heater down at you, heat the place. If you're doing exhaust, the damper will open, the heater is off, and you're exhausting the air out. You're exhausting the air out. So I want to remind you of the night light, that little light, especially for your children, makes a lot, and also their heating element. If you want to calculate this one, if you want to do the calculation, how would you do it? This comes, guys, recommended 20 amp circuit, but how would you do the calculation for this, if you're going to do it? And you size the over competition device and the whole thing for it. If it's, if we don't do that. Usually it's an appliance comes with recommended 20 amp circuit dedicated for it. But I will remind you guys, the fan is a motor, motor. So you take the full load current, one times full five times full load. Then you take the heater, one plus the heater, 1.25 times full load current, right? Because it's continuous load, heater is continuous load. Uh, plus the light, the light you can argue they are non-continuous or residential. The two lights are non-continuous or residential. So you take the full load, full load amp for the first one plus full load amp for the second one. You add everything else and you size your conductor. Luckily, we don't do that. It's on appliances. So it comes with a tagged nameplate and a tagged brand circuit that feeds. So if the amps are long enough, then we can choose? Yes, can yes, choose yes. You could do, it's like a, a baseboard heaters when you do baseboard. Nick, my issues with any equipment that has a motor, any equipment that has a motor, if you put two of them or three of them in the same circuit, you're taking a chance of tripping, not on overload, on inrush. That's kind of the, the why it's a good practice. Any major equipment, not small equipment, that has a motor in it, is to give it a dedicated circuit. Definitely in commercial. But if, let's just say that this fan combo stuff was a little simpler. So say it was uh, just a fan. I'm going to give you that. Suppose that you came up here with seven amps, right? Seven amps. And then we can throw that I can throw another one at, at the same circuit. Bathroom circuit. No, not the 20 amp circuit. Dedicated circuit for the bathroom. Okay. So Separate lighting, circuit. All the lighting. You could, yes, uh, lighting circuit for the bathroom, yes. What you can do, guys, if I want to remind you in the bathroom, by code you have to have a 20 amp circuit, branch circuit for the bathroom. This should feed GFCI reset. You, you're not allowed to feed this combo from this circuit. You can, yes. And an exhaust fan. If it's just one exhaust fan, mm -hmm. no heat in it, yes. But you're, this is a, this is, takes a lot of energy with the heat and cool. It's more than just exhaust fan in a bathroom. I've never seen the heat flow. I've never seen the heat flow with the coil. With the coil? I've seen it in a, whole, in a motel. You said you have one? Yeah, that's pretty common yeah. from my experience. Yeah. So if you put them right by the you know, tub shower, 
throw some more like some shower typically right next to each other in a plastic five by seven. You yeah. pick this thing up when you walk out of the when you're yeah. in the tub you're heating yourself up and you know, yeah. you know what the other way is useful. <laughs> well what they what about for a toilet seat here? <laughs> <laughs> Any question about this? So what's all this about? 20 amp dedicated circuits. Done. Um, how would I know? Honestly, you have a piece of equipment. A residential does anything. So you have a piece of equipment like, how would you know? You always, every time you have a machine, appliances or equipment that you don't, you have no idea. They have a nameplate on it. On the nameplate, there's recommended <clears throat> for load current, um, a, a recommended over condition device, and a brand circuit size. I, if I don't know, and I don't want to get into, I don't have the full load ammo, that fan. It comes as a combo. So on the nameplate, it will tell you recommended, dedicated 20 amp circuit or 15 amp circuit, and then you go size a, a brand circuit for it. Any question, guys? <clears throat> um, my question for you, what type of wiring methods you're going to use here? Let's count how many conductors we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, right? Am I right here? Five conductors. Five conductors. What wire methods you're going to be using here? What wire methods are you going to use here? Well, according to the book, you've got to put it all in one cable. Well, or you isolate it. Well, you cannot. So you have five conductors, and I will remind you oh, by the way, there's a ground too. Plus ground, right? Five conductors plus ground. How are you going to wire this? Five conductors plus ground. These are all one circuit, so you, you have to put them all, group them together in one conduit. So your option number one would be flex here. You flex it from this metallic box here all the way to the equipment. And in the flex, flex let's just say, I don't know, probably five of them. You should be able to get in half, half an inch flex. Um, and you're going to put how many of them? That will make them six, right? Because the flex is not approved as an equipment ground conductor for longer than six feet, and definitely not for this application for light. So that will get you six conductor in half an inch. I think you can should be able to fit in half an inch. Otherwise, three quarter of an inch. Flex it. So we can't run. Um, that's one option. Um, yeah, that's one option. The other option is now if you are to run them in an NM cable. If you want to run them in an NM cable, then you have to take the loops. So remember, you're going to take these three and these three. So this will be uh, 12, uh, 12, three here. And also this will be 12, three coming to you. You have to have the neutral of every one of them. You can't take the neutral with, with one. Yes, but the neutral. So you take a two neutral. I'm going to take 12.3 and 12.3. Not a good idea if you have this application, but it's easier though because you're using 12.3, 12.3 anyway versus uh, now here you need to have uh, THHM conductors and flex. You might not be carrying them in residential. So it creates, I don't know how you wire it, but it creates, creates other issues. If you don't have this light here, the night light, that will cut you down into four conductors uh, plus a ground, so I might be able to buy 12.4. 12.4, that will get you there if you don't have this light. Right? 4 plus the ground. 12.4 is okay. 12.3 and 12.4. Any question is about this? This is it. That's the deal. Uh, 125, if you fix in places, continuous load. This is just going through all these, what what each one of them guys switch and how they work, uh, the damper and so forth. Okay, any question about this fan combo before I go to the exhaust fan in the attic? 20 amp circuit, dedicated 20 amp circuit for all these. Okay, in the attic, guys, do I need to have a fan in the attic? Do I need to have a fan in the attic? No. Is it a good idea from a heating cooling system in the attic to have a fan? Yes. If you decide to put a fan in the attic, I want to remind you, what is the fan? It's a motor. So what do you need to apply the rules of what? The rules of a motor on the fan. What does the rule of a motor say? 
you need, it's continuous load, one time, one, one times, uh, 1.25 times the full load current for conductors. Overcome tension device is 2.5 of the full load current. You need a disconnect with inside. You need some type of a controller that could be snap switch if it's smaller. What else do you need? You need some type of an overload unless the motor is protected. These equipments, they have some type of protection on them. The fan protected internally from overload. Then we don't worry too much about it at this size. So the same thing, they go through sizing. You size it this based on a cubic foot, a cubic foot per minute that you need to, to exhaust. So it's supposed to circulate the air and keep you your consumption of power minimum. As far as we're concerned, do we install them? We install them. The size, most likely, we're going to talk about the circulating of the air and, and all this good stuff. If you're using fuses, here they're saying if you decided to use a fuse, remember the fuse is 175. Most likely, we're going to be circuit breakers using circuit breakers on it. Um, and you're going to use a, the controller on it. You can use a temperature controller or humid, humidity stat that can turn it on and off at a certain preset values. Preset values. This is the if relative humidity you can set it up from five all the way to ninety-five. Chris, do you have one of them in your attic? Uh, yeah. Wind power. Wind, yeah, that just to circulate the air. Any question guys about this? So again, disconnect over competition device before we get into the IP massage tub. So an attic, um, if you have an attic, if you have an attic fan, what I would do, depending on the size of it, if you have an attic fan, I will give it a 20 amp circuit, depending on the size again, dedicate it to the fan and um, controller that could act as also a disconnect if it's in the same location and off it goes controller that acts as a disconnect any question guys if you have i want to remind you guys if you have equipment that need maintenance in the attic what do you need you need, well, for HVAC equipment, you need receptacle, but you need light. So if you have an attic fan, that you have an attic fan, um, you need some type of a light to maintain the equipment. This is equipment, you need to maintain. So you need to put a light switch there that feeds it. A receptacle is if you have an HVAC equipment, definitely need receptacle. We'll talk about this one in a second. So that's what they did here. They have 20 amp circuit for it or 15 amp circuit. Is they're using 15? Okay. Okay, yep. They're using a 15 amp circuit based on the full load amp of the equipment. And 15 or 20 guys, you size it based exactly like a motor. Exactly like a motor. So you have um, Full load, current, full load current multiplied by 1.25. That will get your conductor uh, 2.5 times full load current. That will give you over current protection device. Be it 20, be it uh, 15, depending upon the size. And you are right, they're using a uh, number 50 because the full load current is 5.8. So if you take to 5.8 guys, multiply by 1.25, give you 7.5, you're number 14. You're pulling a number 14 and the overcome friction device next standard is 15 circuit breaker. Any question guys about the, about the um, exhaust fan? Grounding has to be grounded. Uh, disconnect means the disconnect means for this fan, it could be a, a, a switch, snap switch right next to it. So you have to have a, um, a switch fuse box. In the, in the book, they're using a, a switch fuse box. So if you take the fuse out, you unplug it, that will disconnect the whole circuit. That will act also as you disconnect. the 
sure the fifteen boxes you use any regularity the old ones. I haven't seen them. I as a disconnect. Yeah, but they have the one. The one. Yeah. I haven't seen them. Switch fuse box covered unit mounted in a four inch. That that's what they're using as your disconnect means. Otherwise, the snap switch for this one will work just fine. You bring a snap switch right next to it. As a matter of fact, that could be you turn it off and you work on the equipment. Okay, any question as about this one? 15 amp circuit to the um, to the attic. The last thing that is on this in hydro massage bathtub. Hydro massage bathtub. They're defining it. Um, my bathtub is not. Here's the. I like them to finish it right here. <clears throat> if your bathtub is a hydro massage bathtub, it should do the following can accept, circulate, and discharge water upon each use. Accept and circulate. Circulate is, we have a pump that circulates the water. Um, if you have this system, then then you have a hydro massage bathtub. Hydro massage bathtub for the, almost always, at least the one I've been involved in, you have a 20 amp circuit. Um, you have a, a receptacle. There's your hydro massage pump, you plug it in here. And since the GFCI, this is number 12, number 12, and since the GFCI for hydro massage bathtub guys have to be accessible and the pump is under the tub, how can it be accessible and under the tub? Anybody have ever seen how they do them? Because it's plugged in. So what's your disconnect? Your disconnect, here's your disconnect. Disconnect it right here, no problem. Overload is part of the motor, care less. Manufacturer take care of it. Brand circuit is here, overcast fixture by 20 amp. The only thing that's missing here is the GFCI have to be accessible because these are under the bathtub. So, and then, you know, the, the shear rock and block then. How can this be accessible? Anybody knows how they do them? Ashley, did you wear them? How did you do them? There's a panel that you get to have the plumbing. Put the GFCI out within the panel, the unit came with a cord and plug. Okay. Plug it in and nobody ever tested the thing anyways. But, <laughs> but, but you have to use screws to get into it. No, it's a plug. Oh, it's a, so it's, all, it's a door that you open. Okay, accessible, readily accessible. But some of them guys that you have to use screw to screw that cover on, that's not readily accessible. So what they do is they have a, a trip face here. Uh, a trip, this is a GFCI trip face. It's not a receptacle, just a face. You bring the circuit to it, out of it, and it trips. If it trips, you can reset it, but there's no receptacle, just trip face. It's a face with a trip mechanism. They take all the controller and they put it on a face. And then this will be a regular receptacle protected from this face of a GFCI piece. That's one method. The other method, obviously, is put this GFCI circuit breaker. Accessible. This is a common method of having that trip phase. Any question is, that's it. Now, there's bonding. You have to bond. If we'll talk about hydro massage bathtub, guys, when we talk about swimming pool. You have to bond everything metallic with number eight cover conductor. Everything has to be bonded in the area with number eight a W G copper. Copper. So you take it, you bond the frame of a motor to the pipe, if metallic. Um, if it's non-metallic, what are you going to have? You're going to do anything. Anything metallic in that area has to be bonded together with number eight. Any question, my friends? That's all what you need to do know about a bathtub, a hydro massage bathtub in residential. Now, if you have a hydro massage bathtub in a hospital that size differently, it's a motor. How do we size it? By the way, how do we size it if we don't know the typical sizes? How would you size it? It's a motor. What do we do for motors? 1.25 times full load current, we size a conductor. 2.5 times full load current, we size overcome tissue device. You need to have a disconnect. 
either the plug-in or a circuit breaker or my disconnect here is right here um, overload if the manufacturer is not providing the overload you have to provide the overload so you get into sizing sizing exactly like any other motor <clears throat> Everything, everything that we said has to be bonded together, guys, with number eight, CU cover to the frame of the metal. In 2011, Phil, my friend, they said, if you have a double insulated hydro massage top pump, double insulated, so what are you going to bond to? What are you gonna, you, there's no place to bond to, right? In the past, if you have a hydro massage bathtub with a pump double insulated, you don't provide the number eight. In 2011, they said, no, you have to provide it, even if it's double. So, they, and they told you, if you read through it, the hydro massage bathtub um, article, it says you have to bond to the equipment grounding conductor in the box. So you, so suppose that this one was a double insulated, nothing to tie to, you're gonna, there's a box here, right? And there's, a, there's an equipment grounding conductor coming to the box where the receptacle sits. You take the number 8 with the number 12, you tie it together in the box where the receptacle sits. And you leave them for a future use. The idea is, <laughs> the idea is, in the future, if somebody to go change a double insulated pump into non-double insulated pump, they will grab that number 8 from the box, and you tie it to the frame of the pump. And they are expecting you to attach to the copper with water pipes associated with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is the other side. One side goes to the box. The other side goes to everything, um, everything metallic in the area. Yep. One side goes to everything. Grab everything metallic. Pipes, all the plumbing fixtures, if metallic. Grab them all, tie them to the frame of the pump. Now, the frame of the pump is double insulated. What are you going to tie them to? You're going to take them down to the box here, tie them to the equipment. You have to provide an equipment ground conductor. Tie them to the equipment ground conductor. That's changed in 2009. Any question, guys? Predicting people's behavior. Predicting people's behavior. I, I, I'm going to give you a quick break here, guys. Just give me a second here, though. I want to uh, look at a couple of pictures if I forgot something. Uh, some control. I want to look at some control stuff. That's I thought it's interesting. Uh, this is, and then I'll, uh, number 22. Okay, here's your exhaust fan. The heating element uh, neck. You have that picture in yours. Two looks like and we talked about this one exhaust fan and louvers and all this stuff. The fan, uh, humidity stat low and high, and control for the fan. Okay, here's a couple of control for your fan, guys. This is you have this one in your book, that's what I wanted to, to talk about a little bit. Um, you can have different control, you can have a control for the exhaust fan, just a snap switch, turn it on whenever you want, and up whenever you want. B, B is a, a speed control switch. You can speed control it with B. C is temperature switch or timer. I'm sorry, timer. You can time it. It's switch control. Um, so C is a switch control. D, if you guys look at the humidity stat, so a humidity control. You set it at certain humidity, turns on and off by itself. Uh, e. As exhaust fan mounted, where's my E? E is temperature, you have temperature control. And F, high temperature auto sensor, you have a high temperature that can open it if the temperature becomes so hot in this area for safety. And you have another control system, this is safety factor. And F, high temperature auto, that's my F. And if you look at G, G is um, a combo. Can you guys see how G is? G, you have a high temperature safety, and you have speed control, as well as H. What was H again? Humidity stat. So you have a speed control with a humidity stat, all in one. You don't have to know that. This is different ways of controlling it. We don't, we don't design this. It comes, as far as you're concerned, um, uh, Nick, so you don't lose sleep over it. Here's what, what, as far as you're concerned. It comes a box like this, and you just wire this side of the box, and get out of it. 
that what what type of control in it is depend upon what the box that you want. Here's another box here. Here's a third box here. All these are in out boxes for the control. Here's a, a, another one here. And this is again all these as far as you're concerned powering into the controller out of the controller. What type of control you buy? Here's the options. And this one here and I forgot when we usually bring the bring the neutral guy directly to the box because we're going through the same table, right? So the last one, uh, etch is, is multiple controllers. You have high temperature, you have um, temperature and humidity stat control, a humidity stat and a thermostat, a humidity stat and thermostat control. That's the edge. So who cares? What type of controller do you need to have? Do you need to have a temperature as well as humidity control? Um, or do you want a humidity only? Or do you want a, just a snap switch? I want to turn it whenever I feel like it that day. Um, timer, turn it on and off for every day in the summer or the winter or whatever for a certain amount of time. As far as you're concerned, guys, you're coming with right in here with, uh, let's use what the book said, 15 amp. And my conductors here are 14.2. Uh, I will remind you, you need um, the controller could be a disconnect if it has a disconnect with it. The, your controller can, if it has an off position, could act as a disconnect if it has an off position right next to it. Now, an auto, off position, that could be your controller. Otherwise, you have to have a snap switch for your controller. Any question about these controllers, different type of controllers? Different type of controllers. So I thought just to mention these, they're interested. Ways of controlling the pump. <clears throat> this is how we wire them if interested. This is how they work. Uh, line voltage humidity stat. Uh, this is interesting, I thought. Um, look at this one here, my friend. You bring, here's the outlet box that we brought. Here's line uh, humidity stat. This is line voltage because you bring a 120 here, as you can see. <clears throat> When the humidity stat kicks in, this will close, that baby runs when to a certain limit, and then this will open after that limit. Phil, I want to bring to your attention to this tiny little thing. Can you guys see that? That's a controller with a disconnect. So the box itself, that's a smart way to do it. You have the, the controller as well as the disconnect in one, so you don't have to worry about an, an extra disconnect for it. So here's your disconnect right in here, which is just a tiny little switch that says off position controller, they have an over over competition device. This is called supplemental over competition device or overload. In this case, it was an overload. You have overload part of the controller. This is the line. <clears throat> Look at this. What's the difference between this one and this one? They have a transformer. Can you guys see that little transformer? So when this kicks in, this is 24 volt. This is 120. <clears throat> when the humidity stats kicks, kicks in, Single pole, single throw. So this will close. What's going to happen, guys, to this coil? Energized, because this coil is fed from 120 volt, 24 volt, right? So when this closes, the 24 volt will be dumped across this coil. What happens if this coil is energized? What happens to this, this tiny little contact? It shuts that contact. This contact is, is protecting what? Is uh, controlling the motor. So the motor is running. Now we are done. It turns off auto. What happened when this is turns off? I lose the 24 volt across the that baby. Actually, the 24 volt continues to be here, but you lose it here. You have zero volt because this is open. Now this baby opens again. And what do you have? You have a motor that stopped. Okay, just a quick reminder. I have a disconnect and I have an overload part of that controller. Um, first, my friend, this is called the class two circuit. Number 12 volt class two circuit. You don't have to have an NM cable, a tiny little wire. Class two wire will, will take you 14. Most likely, that will be <clears throat> two conductors number 16 wire up to low voltage, low voltage. That's why this section is called low voltage control, and this is high voltage. Because here, look at that one that's coming to the controller. That's 14.2. The one that's going to the controller, 
has to have 120 voltage dumped across the sensor. Any question guys about this high voltage, low voltage controller? As far as we're concerned, you bring the branch circuit into a box, out of the box, you have to go to the motor, and in this case, because the uh, humidistat is sitting, the box could be in one location, the humidistat could be in a different location. You have to wire between the humidistat and the box too. Here, I have uh, four locations I need to wire. One, two, three, four, five locations. You have to bring the branch circuit from the panel into a box, that has a control system and disconnect going to another box that has a relay. Now we have a relay box. Um, and then also from the same box going to the motor and from the relay box with number 16, you go to a thermostat that could be located somewhere else. Any question guys about it? I want to remind you, Ashley, that the code for motor C, here's my motor, this is my M, here's my controller, all this is my controller. The, the motor and the controller have to be within sight of a disconnect. Both the motor, the driven machine, and the controller have to be within sight of the disconnect. What does that mean? Means if this, if the controller, if the motor is not in, 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 um, in within 50 feet and within sight, you have to have another disconnect for the motor. Most of the time, guys, in an attic, they're all in the attic. You're all within 50 feet. So I have my controller and my motor which runs the fan, um, all within 50 feet within sight. Any question guys about this? Okay, controller pump on off. That's the hydro massage bathtub. The on off is, is a switch with a GFCI. And that's it, that's all we have. Should we have five minutes break? And I have one more chapter, then I'm done. The chapter talks about two types of heat cool. I'm going to leave guys the air conditioning chillers and so forth to next quarter because we study chillers in details when we go to next quarter. That's commercial. The only thing I want to talk about is baseboard heaters, how to size them, and Chris. They are continuous load, and we size them based 1.25 times full load current for overcam protection device and conductors. Done. Baseboard heaters. Then we're going to move into the furnace. There are two types of furnaces. There is the gas-powered furnace and the electric-powered furnace, right? The gas-powered furnace, by code, you have to provide a 20-amp circuit to feed the pump, just the, the blower. In it. That's it, electrically speaking. We don't do anything else. Just a 15-amp circuit. Like the, the guy, not the one that you guys did with me for the apartment. At 20 amp circuit to feed the furnace if it's gas. If it's electric furnace, we need to size it and we size it like 125 times full load current for over temperature device and devices. So this is what I'm going to do, be doing guys in a second here, show you a couple of pictures. Um, and then, then I'm going to shift into the HVAC equipment. These HVAC equipment are special animals. I'll, I'll write a, a few rules guys for you. Um, <clears throat> rule number one, I know Ashley did, did, said, um, said that one before. If you have, um, if you have an HVAC equipment, cooling systems, you have to have a 20 amp receptacle within a site of the equipment for maintenance, for HVAC equipment. Um, cooling systems, if you have one, you have to have a receptacle within 50 feet or within sight, within sight or not more than 50 feet. So we'll talk about this one in a second. This talk about electric heat. How many of you guys have seen an electric furnace, a big fat electric furnace that burns electricity, burns electricity for heat? Anybody have seen an electric furnace where you take, take electricity, you burn it to heat the house? You need close to 50 to 60 amp brand circuit to feed that heater because they, they, like electric heater, they're gonna, they generate heat through electricity. Um, this is a couple of advantages and disadvantages, guys. The, the, the major advantage of it, of course, it's safer because you don't have uh, carbon monoxide and carbon um, and all these poisoning stuff. Quieter, um, if, you, if you know how the heat works, it. electric heat is quieter. I've never seen one. Um, no chimney, you don't have to exhaust anything, right? What are you going to exhaust in electric heat? You're not burning gas. 
you don't exhaust anything, so there is no chimney, and do not employ oxygen, they don't um, deploy the oxygen or remove the oxygen from your house, so poisoning is limited. The reason my understanding here, uh, Rob, that we don't use it here, because electricity, gas, natural gas is cheaper than electricity. That's why we use mostly natural gas powered, powered um, furnaces. Yes, sir. So in the city here, no, this they have city gas. The, city this, gas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's very stable, right now. Chris, you've seen it for years, yeah. I've owned a house in '76 and never had to call a gas person for anything. Yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, the gas goes to your house like water. Outside central air conditioner considered HVAC equipment. Outside okay. air, yes, yes, that's part of your uh, cooling system. We'll talk about this one in a second. So we need a receptacle. So the question is, so current code says you have to have a receptacle yes. by this thing. Yep. But here's how they can get away with it in residential. In residential, you have to have one receptacle in the front and one in the back. The one in the back, guess what? That one in the back, most of the time, where? Right next to where the air conditioning is, or within 50 feet of the air conditioning. Oh, so the receptacle oh, in 50 feet. 50 feet. Okay. Yeah, so the receptacle in the back covers the air conditioning. That's how they can get away in residential with it. Okay, no problem. Um, so that's basically it. <clears throat> Here's what we're looking at this big boy. And I want you guys to wake up if you're sleeping here. This is a really a big boy. So what they do, let me look at the picture so I can um, I can see that one. It's an electric heat. So the article that talks about it, guys, is right in here, 424. The, all that you need to know is 424 will tell you size it base 1.25 for the overcompetition device as well as for the for the cable, for overcompetition device as well as the cable. So I wanna I wanna bring to you attention, my friends. Uh, the furnace that I have, this baby come with an inflate of 79 amps. Look at that, 79 amps. It's a lot of amps, 79 amps. So you take the 79 amps and you multiply it by, because it's continuous load, you multiply it by 1.25, give you 98 amps. 98 amps for 98 amps. And then your fuse, this is for over current protection device. Then you go to the next standard, 98. What's the next standard from 240.6? 100 amp. Then you go to 100 amp fuse. So your fuse here, as you guys can see, it's going to be a 100 amp fuse that protects it. That fuse could be separate or could be inside the panel. It doesn't have to be separate. It could be inside the panel. And then the same calculation for the conductors, the same calculation as for the conductors, same calculation, 98, and if you go to the code, it will get you, you need number three. You need, um, in this case, we need two conductors, number three. Two conductors, number three with a ground. Done. Exactly like any other heater. No gimmicks, nothing. 1.25 for the conductor and the over competition device. Here's my over competition device. Conductor are here. Um, since this is an appliance, you need a disconnect. And the disconnect is size the same thing. If it's 100 amp, you need 100. The way they're showing it right now, this is 100 amp. If you use disconnect, the fuse have to be 100. The disconnect have to be 100 amp to house a fuse of 100 amp, right? So that disconnect also, disconnect is 100 amp. Um, now, here, Chris, if you use a circuit breaker, 100 amp circuit breaker, right in here, and your furnace is right next to it within 50 feet, the circuit breaker will act as your disconnect too. For this equipment. In this case, they have a fuse disconnect. That's it. So all what you need to know about an electric furnace. Does the other end of that cable in this diagram have to be through a breaker or something as well? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. In the way they're showing it right now, yeah, you're going to come over here with 100 amp. But my point is you don't have to have a fuse here if you have a 100 amp circuit coming to it. It's either or. Nothing in this application, really nothing. You need a disconnect, yeah. but you can have an unfused disconnect. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, and so here's your furnace. The second thing, guys, is, is this is a class two circuit. I want to remind you, this one is called the class two, class number two circuit. 
thermostat wire, thermostat wire, a wire to the thermostat. That's typical. That's how we do it for even gas powered furnace. Gas powered furnace. Any question about electric powered furnace? So you can't run class two wiring in the same conduit. Yes. If you use uh, 16 gauge, do they, do they, I see they allow you to run control wires. Class two circuits, class one, two, and three circuits, control circuits. The rule is you cannot run them in the same boxes, conduits, devices with the power circuits. That's the general rule. There is exception for it. Exception number one, and that's where you're coming to. Exception number one, if I have a class two circuit that's associated with a power circuit, exactly what you're looking at. A class two circuit associated with a power circuit. Both of them are feeding the same equipment. They're not going anywhere else. And if the class two circuit is rated for the same voltage as the power circuit, same voltage. Same, the insulation, the insulation, insulation, insulation of the conductor, the insulation of the class two circuit insulation conductor is rated as the power circuit. THHN here and THHN here. Mm -hmm. The same insulation, functionally associated because of the equipment, and you can put them the same in the same conduit. Otherwise, the rule is you separate them. Does that make sense, guys? They have to be functionally associated, means they're going to the same equipment and they stop there. They don't go somewhere else. That's what functionally associated. They're controlling the same equipment. And if this, if you are to use THHN here, and of course you're going to be using THHN here, the same insulation type, then I can stick these wires in the same conduit. Typically, we don't do that. The insulation are different for the thermostat wire than the, than the power circuit. And I don't see, honestly, uh, Chris, right here with this subject, I don't see the value. It could be, though, it could be a situation where it will be cheaper to run them in the same conduit. Any question about electric furnace? This is called electric powered furnace. I want to remind you guys, inside this electric furnace, there's also a blower. There's a heating element and there's a blower. So right here, when you bring your power, there will be some heating element and there will be some blower. And both these are powered from this circuit, heating element and a blower. Any question about this? That's not the one that you have in your home, the electric furnace. Here's a calculation that we've just done. Um, Resistive heat. Okay, so that's basically it in terms of really the electric furnace. Any question about the electric furnace? Now I want to I want to tell you if that was a gas furnace, we'll talk about gas furnace when it comes. If I if it was a gas furnace instead of 100 amp, I put 15 amp circuit here. Done. Because all the way here, that 15 amp is only powering what? The blower, the fan inside it. The heat element is the gas. We're burning heat. Here, we're burning electricity to get heat. Okay. Resistant heat cables. Anybody have seen a heating cable? Anybody wired with a heating cable? They can put heating cables under the floor in the kitchen or in the dining room or somewhere and heat the floor, or they can heat the wall, or they can heat the ceilings with a heating cable. People who use it, they like it, so the floor is heated. Heated floor. If you are to use, if you are to use a heating cable, guys, then you have to be very careful. There's a few rules for heating cable. Rule number one: If you're using, you have to have ground fault protection and GFCI. We, it's not listed here, so you have, depending where you are, you need to have a ground fault GFCI. If you put them in kitchen, if you put them in a kitchen, or if you put them in bathroom, of course bathroom or if you put them in a kitchen bathroom or for the most part wet location if you put that cable in any wet location you need a gfci protection they all come with a ground fault protection a ground fault protection guys is it's less sensitive than gfci let's put it this way so if you have a cable here's what you need to do if you have a heating cable number one you have most likely comes with Specification, it will tell you it you need to put this depending how big on a say 20 amp circuit. You put a 20 bring 20 amp circuit. The 20 amp circuit, if it's going in a kitchen or if it, you're heating a kitchen, you have to put GFCI. So here's your option. Either you feed the 20 amp circuit to a GFCI receptacle from the GFCI receptacle, you feed the cable, tie the cable to it, the heating cable, 
or you can feed directly a GFCI circuit breaker into the cable, directly into the cable and heat the cable with GFCI um, circuit breaker. You have to maintain, if you have a heating cable, guys, I don't know how many views are. If you have a heating cable, you have to maintain a two inch clearances. <clears throat> so if it's recessed, if the objects are recessed, you have to make two inch where the cable is here. And then I put my, my, my fan or my light in here two inches and I can put my cable, heating cable. You can put your heating cable right top of it. If it's recessed, if it's surface mounted, you have to maintain six inches if I remember that right. Can you tell us where that is in the book? Uh, uh, heating cable, that would be to, wh which book? Our book? Residential. Yeah. I can't remember where the I, heating cable. Wall mounted heaters. Marking of a heating cable. Two wire, two four. Yeah. I don't know in the book. I can tell you where in the code is. Guess what here is. Supply heat is. Okay, resistive heating cable. If you check here, um, Okay, keep wiring 240 for each identification. If you go to page uh, 488, resistive heat cable, I believe 424.34 through 424.45 should tell you about the clearances. 424.34 through 424.45. That should give you any the clearances that we talked about, the GFCI protection and so forth. Okay. So that's basically <clears throat> a few things about the electric um, cable. They have color code them, guys. They color code them based on the system. I don't know if you installed them. If you install a 120, it's yellow. The cable itself, that one that heats. The way they do the cable, the cable have a resistor in it, guys. So the cable itself has a resistor. And you, you put all your cables <clears throat> all the way up. And you bring them at the end with 120. And each one of them has a resistor, and they heat. They just heat, they heat the cable. That's sim simplified version of it because also there's um there's a lot of control and regulation. The cable is self-controlled and self-regulated, and we get to a lot of control and regulation issues. <clears throat> okay, uh, electric. So that's a heating cable. Questions about heating cables? Cables embedded in floor, ceiling, or um, floor, ceiling, uh, ceiling, or walls. You put the GFCI receptacle only if it's in wet location, like kitchens, and, or bathrooms, or hydro massage bathtub, bathtub areas. Um, 20 amp, typically 20 or 15 amp circuit GFCI, off it goes. Your furnace, guys, they're suggesting that the furnace does not like a voltage <clears throat> less than 98%. Voltage variation is a big deal. I don't know if they did that voltage ratio right. Um, I have a feeling that <clears throat> there is a square in it. Applied voltage div divided by rated voltage are uh, square. No, the square is right here, Chad. The, uh, I was looking for the square right here. OK. <clears throat> long story short, guys, long story short, let me give you this example based on that. If your heater is running at 120 volt and you decided here's 120 you decided to run this baby at 240 240 you do the math on this if you are rated for 120 you know do it at 240 you will get four times the amount of power four times the amount of power four times so suppose suppose the power here was 1kw when you reach here, you get 4 kW if you apply the formula. The opposite is true. Take this. If you are a, one tw um, a 240 uh, baseboard heater or any type of heater, if you're a 240 and Chad decides to run you at 120, here's what happened. You get <clears throat> here, you get one fourth of the power that you get under this one. Okay, let's take an example. 
If that was one kW, right here you get one fourth, you get 0.25 kW. Does that make sense? You double the voltage, you get four times more power. You cut the voltage by half, you get one fourth of the amount of power. That's what this factor is telling you. That's a big, big, huge thing, guys, with the distribution system and transmission when we do them. Um, if you want to feed four more homes in your city, in your block, four more homes, four times more homes in the area that coming to you, raise the voltage, the distribution voltage of 4160 that, that they're using to 13A. You can, you can feed more than four in this case because it's more than double. Every time you double the voltage, you get four more time um, power. Granted, the equipment is rated for it, guys. At one point, at one point, if the equipment is rated for 120, dump 240 for a long time, I'm going to kill that baby. So, yeah, but that's just to give you an idea what, any question guys about variation? The higher the voltage on equipment, the resistive equipment, the more power you can get out of it, but the lit, the, the, the expected life will go down drain from there. <clears throat> okay. Um, electric heat, guys, we talked about the furnace. There's another one, baseboard heaters. Baseboard heaters, baseboard heaters, my friends, are heaters, too. Um, you size them based on the full load current, the same thing. So suppose that this was an I, how am I going to size the conductor here? 1.25 times I. How am I going to size the overconfiction device? 1.25 times I. That's it. That's it. Baseboard heaters, like the furnace, exactly like the electric furnace. Okay, take this. For the heater, I need conductors. So in this case, this was a 20 amp. So anybody can suggest what the conductor here? Number 12. And what's the conductor here? Number 12. <clears throat> you dump. You dump, uh, in this case, 240. This is a 240. You dump the 240 power across the heater, and it converts electricity into heat and heats the house. Baseboard heater. I will bring your attention to the following. You can have line controllers, <clears throat> low voltage or high voltage controller. If you guys look at this one, anybody can tell me if this thermostat is high voltage or low voltage thermostat? Low voltage. Low voltage. Why? Because I get 240 here. I get 24 volt here. Look how it works. You have 24 volt here. If this kicks in, we want more heat. What happened here? This will close. Now the 24 go across this relay. 24. When you energize this relay, what happened to these contacts? Bam, bam. You got heat. Very easy. Then now we are good. This trip, there's a range. You know how the thermostat works from this to this. Start at this point, stop. So we reach the point of stop. Now we killed the 24 volt across this one. What's going to happen to these? Open and my heater stops. <clears throat> That's called low voltage thermostat. Low voltage thermostat. Any question guys about this? Baseboard heaters do not need a disconnect. If you don't have a motor on them, you don't need a disconnect for them. That's a really nice thing about them. You can throw them anywhere else, hardwire them, no disconnect. I want to bring to your attention, guys, re-identification. Do you remember the code allows you to re-identify the white as a black to be used with heaters that run at 240? Make sense? Only, <clears throat> and this is from Article 224. Article 224, right? That, that's 224. If you go to Article 224, it will tell you no problem. Go re-identify the neutral. Uh, is that okay? So 224, 200.7 and a C, right? Yeah, there's no 224. 200, say again, 200.7 and C, right in here. But there's also, they refer you to 240. I think 240 refers you to that one at one point. Okay. Anyway, so you, yeah, here you go. 200.7C, the article. According to 200.7C, you can mark the 
for the heaters. I thought two, two uh, yeah. I thought 424 also can give you that. Anyway, so this one, this article will tell you no problem. Go re identify the new, the white as a hot. Go re identify the white as a hot. Any question, guys, about this? I want to remind you that this is class one circuit. And like um, Chris said, can I put these class one circuits in the same conduit? Typically, no, only if they're insulated for the same value. Any question about the heater, guys? How do we size the heaters? 1.25. Can I put two heaters in one circuit? No problem. Bring it on. Take the amps of the two heaters, multiply it by 1.25, and then size the overconfliction device. We typically put one or two in one circuit, 240, um, but really it goes by the full load amp of the heater, baseboard heater. There you go. I should have went to my second slide, uh, Chris. 200.74 gets you to re-identify. This is another place where we identify the neutral guys as a hot to connect in this application. Okay, I want somebody to tell me two things here. Um, is this a line thermostat or a low voltage or high voltage thermostat? Line voltage, high voltage thermostat. Why? Because there is no transformer in it, Chad. Duh. And here's where the identification again. Can I come from here and feed another baby here? If in this case, if this was, this is a 240, let's just say this is a 20 amp. If I have a 5 amp here and a 5 amp here, can I put, can I do that? Well, it is within sight of the controller. Which one is that? Within that, so, that is second one. Yeah, in the same area. In the same area. So in the case like this, guys, you take 5 plus 5, right? Multiply them by 1.25. What do you get you? 510 times 1.25 gets you 12 and a half. 12.5. 12 by 5. Can I get continuously 12.5 from a 20 amp circuit? Bring it on, Chad. No problem. Any question, guys? Any question about that? <laughs> Okay, so here's my second one. We talked about circuits for baseboard heaters, 90, 120. Okay. Um, receptacles. I have a couple of questions, guys, for receptacles. Let's go back. If you need a receptacle, because these come like six feet long, what if you need a receptacle right in this area here because of the rule in residential? What do you do if you need a receptacle right in this area? You can't put the receptacle at the top of the heater because you're going to burn the equipment. So what do you do? You can move, you can put it 18 inches away from it on the floor, in the floor, in the floor. The common practice is to buy a heater with a, a blaze where you can part of the manufacturer of the heater, usually not in the middle of a heater, in the end of the heater, where you can put the receptacle powered from a different circuit. Receptacle part from a different circuit. That's become an issue in residential, guys. You have an eight foot heater on here in residential, but based on my calculation, I need within that eight foot the receptacle. What am I going to do? You all, you can order these with a receptacle located in it. So that's what they're trying to solve the problem for residential. So heaters, 15 or 20 amp heaters that comes with them, fit from a different circuit. Okay, here's what we're talking about, as you guys can see. Here's my question for you. I have a 20 amp circuit feeding this. I have a 20 amp circuit feeding this heater. Can the same 20 amp circuit feed the receptacle? Can the same 20 amp circuit be the receptacle? No. I have to have another circuit for the receptacle, 15 amp or 20 amp circuit. That's coming for the receptacle. You can't feed the receptacle from the same circuit that feed the heater. You can't feed the receptacle from the same circuit that feed the heater. So get that one. Okay, we got that. Um, this is a no-no. What they don't want you to avoid is to put the receptacle right at the top of the heater, and I'm not going to tell you why not. And when you put the receptacle at the top of the heater, you can burn it. Yes, sir? 
Yes. With electric heaters. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can they change the needles? Is it been a couple of apartments that have electric heaters? Right underneath it. That has been yeah. there since '96, at least. Right above it. Yeah. At least my understanding, nine till '96. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Other places probably have them, but at least my understanding is '96. At least my no knowledge of it. Okay, so that we got that wall-mounted heaters. You can have wall-mounted heaters, guys, and and. Um, and size them the same thing. There's with a thermostat, built-in thermostat on them. You bring in a branch circuit, off it goes. Instead of a baseboard heaters. Okay. My computer froze Friday. Come on, bud. Any question, guys, about the baseboard heaters? Mm -hmm. Continuous load, 120.1.25 for full load, uh, times the full load for circuit breakers and um, and for uh, over competition devices. Okay, the second thing I'm going to talk about, guys, is the heat pump, which is uh, the whole thermostat, the heat cooled system, grounding and bonding, air conditioning. Um, I'll show you a, an example as we go through, guys, with the heat pumps. And for grounding, all these equipment must be grounded. I mean, no exceptions. You have to pull an equipment grounding conductor with them. Uh, ACs on 2240, central air conditioning. Um, I want to go directly into a couple of things before. All right, let me go directly into the heat pump because I don't have a picture of it here. So I'm going to go get a picture of a heat pump um, right here. Uh, close it here. All right. Okay, let's go this way. Then we stay out, talk about. All these thermostats talked about this one, talked about this one. We'll go all the way to the here's where two fit from the same. Thank you, Chris, for reminding us. With inside of the controller, two of them can be fit as long as they don't exceed the rating of the conductor and the over completion device. Uh, William, I don't know if you, if you have a blank right underneath it like this. That's okay if there's a blank. So it's the it starts this way and that way. And in between, there's a blank. There is nothing underneath the switch. That's okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It was. It was the receptacle was right on top of the heater. Yeah. That's um, grandfather then. Yeah. Grand. Grand. Here's what we see. That what you don't want you to do, as we said. This is built in. Um, this is a built-in heater, guys. If you look at that one, you size exactly like any other heater. It has an up position here, press that will act as your disconnect for it to work on it. And all what you have to provide for that baby is, uh, say, based on the size 15 amp, circuit number 14, based on the size. Another baseboard heaters, 12240 if it's plugged in. Okay, here's where I want to take you guys to the air conditioning. This is the, they call it the heat pump, AC heat pump combo. The AC heat pump combo. Um, now, Nick, my friend, we're burning here. We're burning, um, well, in this case, we're burning electricity here, the way they're showing it, heating element. So we're coming out of here. And we're bringing a hundred amp circuit, a hundred amp circuit for, in this case, electric heating element for the for the heating element. Then 
or or this could be the gas, or this this could be disappearing. There's no gas, or this could be a gas furnace. From this one, this will be your uh, 15 amp by code number 14 two conductor, 15 amp number 14 two. So this is the most typical one that I guess we have central air. You have your heating element, gas or electric. You have the blower. This one is to power the blower. I will bring your attention, Nick, my friend, to a disconnect to the blower. The, the heating element have its own disconnect if it's electric. If it's not electric, it's just gas. Who cares about it? So that's the, how I got my heat, through electric or gas, and blowing the air through it. Then how you get your cool, you interface another unit. That's what you were talking about uh, first. Here's my AC unit or the pump. You interface it with the inside and the outside with the coils. Long story short, you have your compressor. You compress the refrigerant. You know how the AC works. We'll talk about this as we go, guys. You compress the, um, the refrigerant. Can't remember the, the, the mechanical rule. If you reduce the temperature, if you reduce the, um, if you increase the pressure, if you increase the pressure and maintain the volume, there is a pressure. Of, anybody ever heard about the pressure? Probably, Chris, you've dealt with it. Pressure, volume, temperature equation. A big deal for the HVAC guys. The pressure, the volume, and the temperature. If you maintain, here's what happened. If you maintain the, we understand anyway. If you maintain the volume, and you increase the pressure, you reduce the temperature. And that's what the compressor is doing. Maintaining the volume, reducing, increasing the pressure. By increasing the pressure in the refrigerant, what happened to the refrigerant? You're reducing the temperature. And that's what you need to cool, right? Reduce the temperature. So anyway, they circulate the, the temperature reduced refrigerant into this area here. And they put it in a coil, in a cooling coil. Here's my coil that's going directly into these. That's mechanical, completely mechanical. This is this this there's cool here, and you blow the air through that cold coil. By blowing the air through a cold coil, guys, the air will collect the heat from the hot air. Collect the heat, it becomes hot, it goes back in here. There is a fan that blows the the heat out of the coil and compress it again to reduce it, the temperature, and send it back here. You blow air, air again in there. It collects the heat out of the air. It gets, it turns into liquid. It goes back and, and, and keep the cooling cycle. It keeps going in, collecting heat, taking it out, blowing it up to Mother Nature, come back cold and collecting more heat from the house and dumping it out and, it, and the cycle continues. We'll talk more about this one, guys, when it comes to pressure, commercial, more commercial, because it's really more commercial units for between a chiller, a boiler, and an air handling unit. I have a really nice presentation. Chiller, boiler, air handling unit. How do they talk to each other? But in the simplest form, guys, the refrigerant goes in cold, blow the air through it, get collect the heat, and come back hot, throw the air out through these fans and so forth. So who cares? Who cares is you need air conditioning. Here's my air, that's what the heat pump, the heat pump is. So you need your air conditioning right in here. I want to remind you guys the air conditioning article that is, two, is 4, 440 is the article that talks about it. 440. I want to remind you that 1.25 times full load current is how we size the conductor. I want to remind you also as 1.75 times full load current is how we size the overcome friction device and we go down. That's all what we care. We, I want to remind you that we need a disconnect for this piece of equipment. And like my friend uh, Chris said, you need also a receptacle within. Here's my receptacle, one, two, three, one, two, three. Fit from a different circuit, 20 amp circuit. This receptacle has to be within 50 feet of the AC equipment by code. That's it. So that's, and I will remind you one thing also, the thermostat. This, this is a class two circuit, the one that goes to the thermostat, as well as the one that goes, see how the interface between going to the heater, to, to the furnace and to the thermostat, and uh, you do the control right into this electric furnace. The control is done directly into the electric furnace. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Is it 25 feet? If it says 25 feet, most of the disc, the, the, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the disconnect. 
Yeah, it, the receptacle has to be within 25 feet. The disconnect is within 50 feet. Absolutely right. Receptacle within 25 feet. Um, disconnect is a 50 feet. I'm just kind of mixed up. Any question, guys, about the compressor? Any question how we size the HVAC for load current? There's a few terminology I want to talk about the HVAC. Um, we take the full load current here, 1.25. Most 99% of the time, guys, they give you this information of the nameplate and you're done. So I want to I want to remind you that the size, this number here, is given, and also this number that you calculate here is given. These two numbers are given, and we use them from the nameplate. Done. We don't need to do a calculation. We don't have them. That's how we calculate them. All the refrigerant to all this junk here, none of our responsibility. The mechanical contractors run the refrigerant lines and so forth. Any question about the heat pump? Your, our responsibility is to power the equipment. And you can see how we power this device. We power this device. If it's heat, also we power the heat. Um, and we control. We pull the control wires for them so they can wire them. We pull these control wires. They do the rest. The mechanical contractor will do the rest. Any question about the heat pump interface with an electric furnace or a gas furnace? So that's what I wanted to mention here. There's a few things, guys. Um, so we've got the air conditioning heat pump. Uh, Article 430 applies to it. Here's I and I don't want to go into details to these guys because we will do them all the time. If you guys give me your undivided attention for one second, all the equipment have the following. Something is called rated load current. Rated load current. That's equivalent to the full load current of the equipment. Then there's continuous maximum continuous current. This is the highest amount of current that the equipment can handle before it starts smoking. Maximum continuous current. Branch circuit selection current, this is a number, this one here and this one are, are the same um, for all practical reasons. Branch circuit selection current, you use it to select the conductors for that, the equipment. Minimum circuit ambicity, minimum circuit ambicity, you take this one, multiply it by 1.25, or this one, multiply it by 1.25, and from here or here, whichever is larger, you can get the minimum circuit ambicity. That's how they calculate it. They take 1.25 times the rated load current or 1.25 times the branch circuit selection current, whichever is larger, and then you calculate a number, minimum circuit ambicity, and they tell you the minimum circuit ambicity is 1 to 3 amps. So what do you need to do? You go and size the conductor for 23 amps, no calculation needed. There is maximum over friction device Maximum over temperature device, they do this one guys by going 1.75 times um, either L, R, L, C, or uh, brand circuit selection current, whichever is larger. And then they come up with a 30 M for you. And then you use the maximum uh, over temperature device. If you want to remember one thing from the whole deal, remember these two. Minimum circuit ambicity and maximum over temperature device. These are printed on the name of the equipment. HVAC equipment, that's what you use to size the over temperature device and the conductor, done. Locked rotor current, we use it to size the disconnect, Chris, for the motors later on I do in commercial. Locked rotor current is used to size the disconnect. That's if the motor stops, jams, that's the highest amount of current that this motor is going to encounter if the rotor is to jam and stop. And also your inrush. They also decide your inrush. These are very important values, guys. If you know them now, Phil, well, I'm going to go over them next quarter, quarter when it comes to the commercial. The most important ones, as I said, are these two. Minimum circuit ambicity, maximum over temperature device. In the name layer, we from this one, we size the over current protection device. And from this one, we size conductor. Done. Later on, from this, we size the disconnect. The disconnect, we size disconnects based on lock, lock total current later on. Any question, my friends?
This is the single most important thing about HVAC equipment. And HVAC equipment, any equipment that has compressor, some type of refrigerating cycle in it, that you need a compressor for it. The last thing is mechanical only, guys, as sear. You hear the word sear? Sear 13, I think. Anybody can help me with that? There's sear 12 and sear 13. I think there's sear 14, if I remember that. Coming out of memory here. Sear 13 and sear 14 and sear 12. The higher the sear, the higher the sear, the more efficient the equipment is. Careless, electrically speaking, because for us, the only thing you need to advise, we don't advise with the sears, the mechanical contractors do in the commercial project, but it's really nice to understand that the sear stands for seasonal energy efficiency, efficiency rating. How efficient is this equipment is? I think C13, if I remember last time, we bought C13 air conditioning. Higher the sear, more efficient, and more money you can pay. And there's also a couple of others, guys, of factors for energy rating. A couple of factors for energy rating. The one that I'm familiar a little bit with is that one, but there is a bunch of other annual fuel utilization efficiency, heating seasonal performance factors. This is where you go to your mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineers, my friend, this is their territory. As far as we're concerned, the sears are the higher the sear, the better. And also, the higher the efficiency factor, the better equipment for us. We never size the HVAC equipment, guys. We do not size them, we do not install them, we power them, and we actually even the control almost a gray area. So, but it's good to know. Sear, it's good to know. Uh, I want to remind you guys of this. And I know, Oladipo, you did this one. The heat and the cool are called non-coincidental loads because you don't heat and cool the building at the same time. So what does that mean? When you calculate the feeder and the service, you choose the largest. We've done that. We've done that. Um, and here's where your friend Chad made the mistake of 5025. Here's your 20 amp circuit. Um, this is where you're going to get it. 15, 120, 15 or 20. It doesn't have to be 15 or 20. 120 receptacle um, at it has to be located for the HVAC equipment only HVAC equipment like we said Ashley accessible at an accessible location on the same level look at that we have two levels the same level and 25 unlike I said 50 25 feet 25 feet <clears throat> and uh, look at this do not connect um, uh, do not connect receptacle to the load side of a disconnect. So if I have a disconnect, guys, like this, and here's the load side. Where's the load side of a disconnect? Right here. I can't connect the receptacle here. But guess what the manufacturer do, Chris? They come and they connect them right here. And they put on the line side, and they put the receptacle with the switch. Come in the practice. So here's your disconnect. Have the receptacle right next to it. I can go, disconnect the equipment, lock it, tag it, now it's killed, it's dead, and I can plug my equipment into this still hot receptacle, and that's an acceptable practice, especially in the commercial. You see it, I think we have a picture in the, in the book too, where a disconnect have a receptacle with it. By doing it this way, then you don't have to worry about um, a recept that receptacle can be fit from the same circuit, fused appropriately, if you have a fuse on it, fuse appropriately, or you can bring a 20 amp circuit to it. Any question, guys, about that receptacle, 15 to 20 amp, 120 receptacle for maintenance for these type of equipment? This is just a few things about where to put your gas meter versus electric meter. Some utilities, Chris, they tell you stay away three feet from our meter because of explosion in gas. Okay, the last thing I'm going to see if I can have any pictures that we didn't go through. Got that one. Heat cool, disconnect. Um, okay, the location of a disconnect for an AC, guys. I want you to pay attention to this one, guys. Look at that. If the nameplate, air conditioning nameplate, reads maximum size 50 amp fuse, 50 amp fuse, then you have to have a fuse here, and then you still have to have a circuit breaker in this area, right? Can I have a circuit breaker, no fuse here, if it says maximum a fuse? 
if the nameplate tells you they need a fuse, you have to put a fuse here, girls, either here or here. So that's what this, um, th these couple of slides are about the location of a fuse. Look at the second one. So can I put an unfused, can you guys see it says a maximum fuses? Can I put an unfused disconnect in a 40 amp circuit breaker? No, because they're telling you they need a fuse. Okay, look at this. The second thing is air conditioning, a nameplate maximum fuse or circuit breaker. If they say a fuse, look at what they say. They're saying a fuse. Oh, oh, by the way, if you want to put circuit breaker, we're okay with this. A hacker. They call them hackers. Is this okay then? If they say the fuse circuit breaker, I have a circuit breaker hacker rated for air conditioning, the hacker, but I have no fuse here. Is that okay? Yeah, because the hacker, they're telling you on the nameplate, either or. So we go through these scenarios, guys. We do them in commercial too. Disconnect. That's what you were talking about, Chris. The plug-in fuses. On off. Here's what we. Here's what I talked about, guys. Where you disconnect can have a, a, a receptacle like this. You disconnect can have a receptacle like this. So. And that receptacle is fed from the low side. So here's my disconnect. Look with that one. My disconnect is uh, uh, it's coming here. And from this side, here's my equipment fed. And from this side, the load side, I came and I fed this receptacle. Can you guys see that? That's what they're doing from the load side, feeding the receptacle. So I can lock this. I can lock it. And work on equipment and plug my equipment here. Lock, tag it, work on equipment safely, and plugging my tools into that receptacle that's still energized. What they don't want you to do, all of you, is they don't want you to take this wire from here and feed it right here. Anybody can tell me why? Because every time you want to work on this equipment, you have to disconnect. If you disconnect it, what's going to happen to this? Dead. You have a receptacle that's not energized. Bad news. The thermostats. Okay, that's all I have. Any question, guys? Well, <laughs> it's Friday, huh? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay.